Hi there, my name is Kai, Product Engineer at Vespa AI, and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to build, deploy and query a simple Vespa application. So let's get to it. In this tutorial we'll be starting completely from scratch. I have my code editor loaded up here, I have my virtual environment and activated it, and I have the data set that we'll be using for this tutorial and the link to download this data set is down in the description if you would like to follow along. The first thing we'll need to do is install the dependencies that we'll be needing for this tutorial. These dependencies will be PyVespa, the Vespa CLI and Notebook since we'll be using Jupyter Notebook for this demonstration. You will also need a Vespa Cloud account in order to deploy your application that we will be building. And to create an account with Vespa, you go to this URL here. Link is also in the description. When you finish that setup process, your screen should look something like this with your tenant name there, ready to be deployed to. The first part to creating a Vespa application is to understand your data set and what you want to do with it. This data set, as the name suggests, is of the top 100 films by ranking in IMDB. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a very simple search application using keyword search to search the title of the film and the synopsis to try and get hits on the films. So let's create a notebook. So we'll start by importing JSON. Now we have to translate our data set into a format that Vespa understands or our Vespa feed. And Vespa expects a list of dictionaries that we will call each of these dictionaries a document that we feed to Vespa. So let's create our Vespa feed. And now the important part, this is what Vespa expects. So we first have to have the document ID. In our data set, we will find we have our ID already and it is just called ID for film in the data set. We will get the ID of that um, film. So the next thing is our Vespa instance expects a set of fields. We can have many fields to search through. And so this field in the document is a dictionary as well in itself. And then we have to add the fields or the attributes of the data set that we want our documents to include. So as we said earlier, we want to search our title and the synopsis. So we have to add the title. Um, let's call it film title, series title it is called, and therefore we have to go film and then access the attribute series title to populate that. And then we want the synopsis in our data set. This is called synopsis. We probably also want to return the ID of the film so that we know where in the data set this lies and although we've already added the id to the dictionary at the top there that is only the internal id so if we want to be able to return this id so that we can see uh, the id of the document we have to add it here as well so let's go ahead and do that and perhaps lastly we would like to add something we can filter by for example the year the film was made now we have the dictionary ready so we just have to append that to our Vespa feed. Our data is now ready to be given to Vespa, but now we actually have to build the Vespa application that will receive this data. So to start off, we create what is known as an application package, and we need to give it a name to start off with. Now we have an empty application package and we have to provide it with a schema that describes the document that we will be feeding it. So 
we have to make something that essentially mirrors our dictionary so that Vesper can understand the information that it is being given and also what to do with that information. And the schema has to be given a name and we have to initiate it with a empty document class. So now we have an empty schema and we will fill this schema with fields. And these fields essentially are mirrors of the dictionary that we created. And the field has a name. So name equals. And now the important thing is that this schema, as we said, mirrors our dictionary. So the first field is we can use film title and this will be a string. So we write type equals string. And we want this to be indexed. So in the indexing, we will add a list of uh, arguments. And for this case, we will add it as a index to make the film title searchable. And we will also add what we call summary as this will allow us to return the full title in our query. Other attributes of our uh, dictionary, so we've got the synopsis. We want this to be indexed as well because we want this to be searchable. Now we have another field which was the year I believe, so we'll write field. As we can see in our document here, the year is just a number, so we can call this for an int. And this is a little bit different, so the indexing on this, we will say it is an attribute, actually. This just means it will be kept in memory in our Vesper instance. Therefore, it is possible to filter and do operations on our query using this. And then lastly, we have the field for our ID. And for this one, we don't want to search by ID. We will simply be adding the summary so that we can return the ID. So now our schema is ready, or the fields in our schema is ready, I should say. And we can press OK on that. Next in our schema, we will add a field set. So we have to import that as well. So we add that to our film schema. And so a field set essentially just groups together our fields so that we can search them all as one. So in our case, we want to be able to search both the title and the uh, synopsis, and the field set allows us to do this. The fields is a list of the fields that we want to add. So we want to do add the film title as so and the synopsis and by default then since we named this one default we can search both of them at the same time without having to specify multiple search areas in our query so this is ready now and is added to our schema normally we would also add rank profiles to our schema but since this is a simple application we'll drop that for now and we'll take that up at a later point now that we have created and finished our schema, we will add it to our application package. And now our app package is ready to be configured and deployed. The tenant name is the one that is up here. So for me, that is tenant pi quick start. The name of the application we can access through our object that we've already created in the application package and we need to give the application package itself. Now we can run this and this will take a few seconds and you see it has asked us to confirm our identity. So we just press yes here and we can identify ourselves and authenticate as so. We can now deploy our Vespa Cloud instance that we just created and we'll see if this works or if we've made any mistakes. Oh, and here we see we have made a mistake. So summary, that should not look like that. So now we have to rerun our schema and 
make sure that it is added correctly to the app package again. So add that to the application package and to our Vespa instance or our Vespa cloud. Let's see if this works now. Our application has now finished deploying and especially the first time you deploy your application, it might take a bit of time, might take upwards of five minutes. Now it's, that it's already deployed, updating it, if we wanna do a schema update, it will go much quicker. The first thing we'll do is we'll grab the method of connecting to our instance. We need to grab our certificate and our key. And we will also need to know where to query or rather the endpoint for our application. So if we now run these, we will have our certificates and keys. Now we can actually connect to our Vespa instance and we are now ready to feed our data to Vespa. I will just copy some code that we have lying here. It is often nice to have a callback function to tell us what went wrong if something goes wrong during feeding. But the feeding is done, we take our Vespa application and we give it the Vespa feed and we have to specify which schema it uses and that was our schema name that we provided it which was i can't remember imdb film schema and then we'll give it the callback function that we pasted in as so and we'll run this and our application is now fed the documents if we now go to our Vespa cloud, we should be able to see that the documents have been uploaded to our instance. And yes, we can see that the documents are there. Although keep in mind, it can take a minute or two for this actually to show in the Vespa cloud. So be patient if it still says zero right after you've fed the documents. Now we're pretty much ready with our application it is deployed with fed our documents it is ready to be queried i will add a function that i have lying around here and the function simply prints our results in a sort of nice human readable way we are now ready to query our application and we will pass it some yql which is essentially uh, sql with a few add-ons so this will search our vespa applications for the films that have good in their title and i see that we've got a small mistake here and as in our schema we didn't name the film id at film id we just named it id so we have to change that and run it again and now let's see if we get a result and we did so that is your first query uh, with Vespa. We see we got goodwill hunting and the good, the bad and the ugly. So now we can change whatever we want here. We can say instead of film title, we created the field set, which we call default. So this will check both the synopsis and the title. Let's see if we get any more hits and we'll see that there are more hits here. We can change this to World War, since there are many of those films. And we'll see here, we got 10. 10 is the default limit. So if we say limit 20, we will see that we probably got even more because there are more films, but they're not quite 20. Or we can say limit five, if we only want five. And lastly, I would like to show you the user query function that you can add to your query which essentially is a safe way of handling user input so if this application were user facing or customer facing or whatever you would really want to use the user query because it includes automatic passing to avoid for example injections and stuff like that sql injections and then we need to add the query parameter let's say world war again and you'll see we get the the 10 says we didn't add a limit here and we get our five world war films and the user query by default uses the 
default field set that we defined earlier. So we'll search both the title and the synopsis. That's it for this tutorial. Now hopefully you understand how to set up your own application and maybe start to play around with this example or maybe even try your own data. Just remember when you're finished playing with it, it's a good idea to go to your Vespa Cloud and just delete your deployment so that you don't use up your free credits for that. So with that, thank you for watching this tutorial and see you in the next one. Goodbye now.